Before we get into this year's Kikatan Bethel matchup, we thought we'd show you a little bit of last year's game so you'll know who to watch and what to expect. If ever Bethel had a golden boy in their ranks, Allen Iverson is it. He throws like a pro, runs like a cat, and takes the ball from his opponents any time he feels like it. And all of this was when he was just a sophomore. Another big name brewing to watch this year is Chris Gaskell. He can catch anything, anywhere, at any time. And he does it over and over again. Helping them out on the ground this year will be running back Michael Jackson, who appears here to be as spectacular as his namesake. Kikita is not exactly hurting for talent themselves, but they won't have the benefit of Tony Jordan or Terry Thomas this year. They will, however, be able to count on the running speed of Damon Roberts and the catching ability of Macy Brooks, both of whom come back as upperclassmen this season. Now that you know what to expect, the only thing left to do is to sit back and relax. The real show is coming at you. Bob Hens with Coach Kurt Newsom of the uh, Warriors. Kurt, uh, kind of nasty out tonight. Before I get to that, you had the ball a lot of chances to score against Hampton, and I know you've made some adjustments. Uh, you did not play a bad game, just didn't get the ball in the end zone. Well, you know, they're a quality quality defensive team and anytime you get it down inside the 20 they, they tighten up a little bit and uh, they did some good things on defense and uh, we felt felt like we did some good things on offense well this weather tonight with the field a little bit sloppy do you think that might help you a little bit in that Iverson being a scrambler might slow him down a little bit well they're a big strong football team you know they're a lot bigger than we are up front so I you know that kind of negates that and uh, you know a quarterback scrambling he knows where he's going and that's to his advantage our, our defenders have a more of a problem containing a guy on a wet field. Right. Well, I thought you, your defense did a good job last week. I really did, because the game was in doubt until that play that uh, Newsom broke. Well, in the second half, we felt like we played a lot better uh, defense. You know, they, they threw the ball well against us, and uh, we had a couple breakdowns tackling, but that was a good offensive football team we played. It really was. Well, listen, good luck tonight, and I hope to see you after the ball game. Thank you. Okay, Kurt. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole, along with Bob Henson. We welcome you to a damp and windy and wet Darling Stadium. <laughs> Bob, this game between the 2-0 Bethel Bruins and the 1-1 one one Kikatan Warriors uh, is going to be played under less than ideal conditions tonight. Well, uh, Tim, the, the, it hasn't rained hard. It's just been a kind of a mess, so the, the field is in excellent condition. Larry Malloy and his group have done a great job. But this game is very, very important to Kickatan in that Kickatan has already got one loss in the district with the four Hampton schools on Division 5. It's going to be hard with two losses to make it to the playoffs. It's possible, but it'll be real tough. Now, the Bethel Bruins are undefeated. They are the defending district champions, but they have not played particularly well. They've played uh, a game against Lafayette and a game against Menchville and fumbled the ball away a lot. So uh, Coach Kozlowski is a little bit concerned. Well, I, I don't know if it's the timing. He had a young uh, ninth grader in there at the offense that uh, fumbled four times in the first game. But the timing's got to get a little bit better on him. And once the timing gets better, I think that uh, they're not going to turn it over. Now, this field may turn the ball over because of the uh, the conditions. The field itself is in excellent condition. Uh, you and I were down on the field before the game, and we were looking at it. Of course, the problem is that as the mist continues uh, this evening, the ball is going to be damp. The footing is going to become less certain uh, as we go along, and it's going to be an interesting situation that may occur. Of course, Kikatan uh, will show you lots of different looks to their offense. The Bruins are more of a power team, according to Kaz, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this matches up. Really right, will. Right now, we're going to go to the center of the field for the introductions of the officials and the toss of the coin. Captains for the Bethel High School Bruins. We need to do the Now, we 
have a microphone. I, I believe we have the officials mics for this game, but uh, we apparently are not receiving the signal from the referee, so we'll give you the names of the officials, and we'll tell you, of course, you're looking at the, the Bruins of Bethel High School with their backs to you. Kigatan has won the toss. Have They have deferred the... Uh, the choice to the Bethel Bruins. Well, they've actually deferred to the second half. Right. So Kenny Self will be our referee. Don Hurst is the umpire. The linesman is Carter Ficklin. The line judge is Merrill Eason. And the back judge is Mike Mitchell. So the Bruins now will, in fact, receive the ball. There you see the list of the officials. Okay, and uh, as the teams are now meeting on the sides of the field, first of all, Bob, you had a chance to talk with Coach Kozlowski of the Bruins a little early. Let's go back in time and take a look at that interview. A little nasty weather tonight. Feels a little soft. Will that bother your team any? No, I don't think the uh, turf is really in that bad of shape. Uh, Larry Malloy and his crew have done a great job with it. I mean, there's just a little mist falling, and the grass is what on the top of the ground itself, I think, is pretty firm. Uh, could possibly get a little slippery a little later and uh, you know that could create havoc for the passing game and this win. That's right. Listen, I, I know you you have turned the ball or put the ball on the ground a lot of times your first two games. Do you feel like that was more in timing or just in experience or what? Well, I think primarily, uh, you know, we had a rookie starting a ninth grader in our first ball game and he turned it over four times and uh, then there were a couple other good sticks uh, on the part of Lafayette and a couple last week by Menchville that uh, turned the ball over. And Coach Richard has done an excellent job working with those backs, uh, trying to overcome the uh, mental attitude of fumbling the ball. And uh, we've, of course, improved. Uh, we went from eight turnovers uh, to five, so hopefully we'll get maybe three <laughs> or less. <laughs> okay. Alternative viewing from WHCS TV5. We're set to go as the Kickatan Warriors will be kicking off to the Bethel Bruins. And they got a big win behind them, but the, it's really a short one. Taken by Allen Iverson at the 10-yard line. Iverson up the middle, and he gets by the last man that had a shot at him. It's a foot race. Along the sideline, Iverson steps out of bounds at about the 18 or 19 yard line. On the return, run out of bounds by number 10, the Kickatan Warriors. Again, now that's a byproduct of the fact that you have a wet field in that the ground is going to be slippery and you're going to have problems picking as the defensive player or the tackler trying to catch up as elusive as Iverson. Right, watch the replay on this, Tim. He did a great job of finding a hole, and then he saw if he broke to the outside, he had a better chance of beating a man and almost did, knocking him out on the 18. But watch this gets good blocking up front, and they opened up a nice hole for him, and then there was a missed tackle as we go back to uh, live action. And the live action as the game has moved along very quickly. Here's your offensive lineup for the Bruins. The center will be Page. Anders and Coulter are the guards. The tackles are Dean and Schultz. Whoop, uh, can I see that again? Um, Daniel Walker, Rogers, Harris, Michael Jackson, and the quarterback is Allen Iverson. A little quick on the draw there. <laughs> well, that's okay. But Kaz says, depending on what formation they are in, who will be to, who will start. And there's your touchdown. And that was that was number 24, 24 Charles Shepard. So there's a surprise for you. Charles Shepard is in the lineup, and he goes in for the touchdown virtually untouched. Well, and I tell you, Coach Kyle Sutch gave me a starters, and that's what we saw up there, as you can see Coach Kyle's on the sideline. He says, depending on what formation they're in, it could be 18 different guys that could be starting. So uh, all fairness to uh, the starters, uh, that young man did a great job. We've played less than a minute here in the first quarter. Shepard scored the touchdown. Mishandled the snap. Iverson throwing for two. Got it. So all kinds of action going on right now. The receiving player was Barry Hargraves for the two-point conversion. Here is the touchdown. Nice blocking at the point of contact. And he really just only had one block or one tackler to beat. 
into the end zone. And how far was that? But the touchdown was 16 yards. 16 yards, yards. okay. The return was to the 18, and then uh, whether or not it was a, a mishandled snap or not would be a question, but uh, Iverson nonetheless handled the snap and threw in the end zone to Hargraves for the two-point conversion. Well, next chance we get uh, when we have the, we'll get the defense for the, the Warriors, I mean, the, yeah, the Warriors, but uh, they weren't on the field long enough to get no, there. No, really was, and that happens sometimes in uh, less than a minute. End to end, the Allen Iverson returned from his 10 to the 18-yard line of Kikitan. A running play, and then a second running play, and all of a sudden, just like that, it's eight to nothing in favor of the Bethel Bruins. Now they will kick off, and this will be into the wind. It's fielded at the 22-yard line. Trying to turn the corner, Winston Fox. So Fox with a short return. Looked like he might get more out of it than he did. As you can see, the uh, Warrior offense is McKinney in the center, the guards are Green and Vincent, the tackles of Bowden and uh, Elder, the tight end is Garrett, the split end is Macy Brooks, number seven. He's a big kid, you can't miss him out there. And in the backfield for the Warriors, we see uh, Gary as a flanker, the running backs so are Laws and Damon Roberts, and Devin Roberts, number 12, is the quarterback in the, the Warriors. Two wide receivers to the near side, out of the eye, second man through, gets the ball. That is Damon Roberts, and Roberts, may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And that's number 55 for the Bruins in on a tackle. Last week we called a 55 also. Now here's your defense for the Bruins. Gasco and Williams are the guards. The tackles are Simmons and Hargraves. The ends are Maynard and Gunn. Give me the rest of them. There we go. The linebackers are Robinson and Sims. The corners are Stiff and Melvin. And the safety is Allen Iverson. Iverson does everything but pump up. And that was football. Jonathan Dean who was run, in on a tackle, run, number 55. Run, run. On the option play, this is Devin Roberts, the quarterback, across the 30 yard line to about the 31. And number 50 for the Bruins was the uh, tackler, that Bobby Sims. We remember him from last year at that linebacker spot for the Bruins. The Bruins will, will switch. They'll play, show you a six-man front on defense and sometimes a five-man uh, front on defense. Uh, and he will shuffle men in and out of there on both offense and defense. So uh, uh, this is a uh, very multiple uh, defense and offense-oriented uh, Bruin team. Third down for the Warriors. Ball is at the 31-yard line. Roberts has it, flips to Damon, and Damon is going to be chased down by Northwestern. Got the Bruins, and he will not get to the first down marker. He will be stopped about three yards short of the first down. So the Warriors will be forced to kick the ball, and they'll have Chip Laws, number two, will be in deep punt formation for Kikitan. On fourth down and about, well, let's call it three. Right, we'll have two people going back for the uh, Bruins, uh, number 25 and number 10. Number 10, of course, is Allen Iverson, and number 25 for the... Uh, Alfred Terrell. Thank you. I thought I'd bail you out there. I appreciate A that. A low end-over-end -end kick is fielded by Terrell at the 28-yard line, and Terrell will be wrapped up shy of the 35. So the Bruins with... A little less success, if you will, on the return that time. We'll start from their own 34, 35 yard line. And they lead eight to nothing. Just a quick reminder that the high school football plays four 12 minute quarters in difference to your 15 minute quarters you may be used to as a college or pro football watcher. But uh, believe me, you get 48 minutes of action. Here's the Warriors on defense, defense. now. <laughs> Wharton and White are the tackles. The ends are Giddens and Baldwin. The outside linebackers are Stern and Brooks. Sound like a musical group. Second man through. This is Shepard again, the touchdown scorer, as he is all the way across the 40 to the 41. Rounding out that defense, uh, Morocco, Brown, and Bunyan. Then the corners are Fox and Laws, and the safety is Payne. Do you and feel like we've had all of the game in, in about two minutes here? It's I been a little it's, rushed. It's been, uh, it's been a little bit rushed, but I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the way the, uh, the, the Warrior, I mean, the, the Bruins are firing off the ball. That short drop and a roll by Allen Iverson looking downfield, and he'll run with the football. He slides across the 
field to a near first down. I see a yellow penalty flag on the field. I don't, yeah, that came down. Maybe legal block. Penalty is against the Bethel Bruins. There you see Kenny Self in your picture. We get a chance to watch the play again, see if we can pick up the infraction. Here you see Iverson over center. Iverson has run for more than 100 yards in the first two games for the Bruins, so he's not the least bit hesitant to run if the pass isn't there. There you see a hold right there. Looked like number 55 for the Bruins. Jonathan Dean may have the hold. I don't want to incriminate him because I don't know for a fact that that's the person. Looked like he grabbed the uh, the kick attack defender there, but uh, we won't make that conclusion. I'll just take a guess at that. Second down now. And about 13 for the Bruins. On the delayed handoff, this is Shepard again into the middle of that line, and he just got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. And among others over there was number 80 on the stop. That's Sean Bunyan. Along with 45, brother. number 45 for the uh, uh, Warriors was the other uh, tackler. Tim, and I don't... You gotta you help get me. longer arms or glasses. I'll <laughs> tell you, longer arms or something. I could... <laughs> 45 would be uh, Javal Allen. There we go. I think. Third down now for the Bruins after that penalty. Third down at about 13. Iverson still has the football. Rolling, squares the shoulders, throws, completes the pass. More than enough for the first down and driven out of bounds inside the 45 and about the 43-yard line. That is Demerick Kirk, a 5'9 senior for the Bruins on the receiving end of Allen Iverson's toss, and he, enough for a first down. Tim, he went right down and found the open spot, just did a hook, Allen found him. There was another man way down the field that was wide open, but uh, he found the man to get the, the thing. But watch how Allen turns his shoulders. That wasn't a very pretty pass, but it was an accurate pass. I'll take accurate over pretty anytime. Anytime, you got that right. On the delay, Shepard, another big gainer, and he struggles for the first down inside the 33-yard line. Well, they're opening up some holes. They've been the offensive line of the, the Bruins are opening up some holes, and they are big. And this is what Kurt Newsom said in the interview, that the Bruins outweigh him and are bigger on the front line than they are, so they're gonna have to really uh, try to beat him with quickness. We're talking uh, Kohler and uh, Schultz are on the left side, and that's where the hole is this time. On another, It's kind of a delay. It's almost like I'm going to give you the ball deep in the backfield, and then you find the, the opening spot and go to it. But that time, the Warriors closed down quick. Now, Shepard still picked up three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven for the Bruins. They lead eight to nothing here with 6.05 remaining in the first quarter. They have the ball at the kick of 10, 30 yard line. Fake that delay this time, and the ball batted down, incomplete, as getting a big hand on that ball was number 42, Morocco Brown of the kick of 10 Warriors. And Morocco played a great game last week yes against Yes, he did. Hampton. And Tim, number seven was wide open. I don't know if you've seen, went down and hooked for the Bruins, was wide open. That's interesting. Now, the first two games, two players that have already been significant in this offense didn't make the stats chart for the Bethel Bruins and that's Shepard and this number seven Kirk this is Shepard again and the ball pops loose the ball is still on the ground and who's going to recover it they're going to say what the it was down. was down he was down I evidently it had to be the call the whistle had already sound but that ball was squirting out of there like a uh, uh, like a greased pig trying to catch him. Nobody seemed to be able to get a hold of it. I was down on the field, Bob, uh, as you were as well, talking to the coaches before the game, as Bethel now is going to call a timeout. And that ball is becoming, going to get very slippery before this game is over. Yeah, and that's what Coach Kyle says. Well, we got a timeout real quick. Let me tell you that we will pick a DC Engraving Sports Place player of the game from each team tonight. Uh, they will receive a plaque from DC Engraving and a shirt from uh, the sports place. DC Engraving is located at Tab Square on Route 17 in Yorktown. That's Dave Buckwalder, his young man out there. The sports place is located at Hampton Woods Plaza on Big Bethel Road. Dave Chubb is the man that we need to see there. We appreciate their efforts. All right, here you see some of the replay of the action. This is where the play was knocked down. Yeah, Did a great uh, job, uh, and that was Morocco Brown that got up there and got a hand on that ball. 
Let me oh. tell you something, Bob, about a, a special deal we're going to be uh -oh. doing here. This is okay. a special, and I want to do this real quickly. Channel 5 wants to give you free tickets to one of our high school football games. If you're the first person, well, I'll get, I mean, let me finish this after the uh -oh. next we, time we have a break. We got, a, we got, got a chance. Here's some freebies. Freebie time. Fourth down. All right, it Three is fourth go. down now. The Bruins looking at a fourth and about three. Iverson over center. They're not going to go for the field goal as they could. Iverson has the defender on that left side fall down. He completes the pass inside the five yard line. That was Kelly Rogers. That is Kelly Rogers, number 15, the senior. And the defender for the for the Warriors, rather, slipped on that wet turf. He and sure it was did. was easy going for Rogers after that. And Rogers picked up good yardage after the catch was made. Well, let, Watch the replay last year. Kelly Rogers was uh, Iverson's uh, probably his main target, his favorite receiver. But you can see as he catches it, the, the Warrior had slipped down number five for the uh, Warriors uh, playing defense. And Back to real live action here in the corner for the touchdown. A five yard scamper by Allen Iverson, and it's very quickly a 14 to nothing ball game. And that was just a bootleg, or was that a, uh, I was watching the, uh, I missed it. <laughs> well, uh, well, Gary's a little excited there sitting next to you. Tell him to sit down in his chair. He's <laughs> On the try, the extra point will be Wilton Evans. High snap handled cleanly. Evans' kick is up, and it's no good as the kick goes wide to the left. And again, I was starting to say that during the warm-ups, I was watching the, the uh, snap and the kick practicing for the Bethel Bruins in particular. And that ball is so slippery that twice the kicker, Evans missed the ball as he went to kick it. He actually slipped off the ball with his foot. Another time, or two other times, the, uh, the spotter couldn't, couldn't hold on to the ball. So in spite of the fact it's not raining hard, it is still very damp out there, and it's going oh. to make it difficult to handle that football. Oh, it really will. The, the field is wet. You make no mistake about that. And that ball is going to get wet. And Allen Iverson did a great job of getting that center. That was a high center, and he got it, brought it down. But like you said, the ball is slippery, and uh, the field, uh, the extra point kicker is a straight-ahead kicker, which we don't see much anymore. Evans will kick off for the Bruins. They have put two touchdowns on the scoreboard, and we still have 522 remaining in the first quarter. The Bruins struggling to put points on the first two games, 21 points in each game, against much less superior opponents. And again, Fox is wrestled to the ground. In on the stop was Evans, the kicker. And then for the 43, Bruins. yes, sir. He was down there. They had a commas. Kazi guy going down there that would come flying down, just missed. Or is that uh, a Kami Kozlowski? Uh, <laughs> Kozlowski. Oh, I'll tell you, the, the, I know Kaz was concerned about the many of the times that they put the ball on the ground in the first two games, and and uh, he's got to be pleased with uh, the way that they're playing right now and uh, opening up the, the holes for their team. But Kikatan is not out of this game by no means. Oh, it's, it's much too early to even think about that. Roberts stacked up at the line of scrimmage for little or no gain. Let me tell you real quickly, as I started to tell you about this freebie we're going to give you, we're going to give you free tickets to the first person to write us and tell us that the year we first began football coverage here on Channel 5 and give us the name of the two teams that were involved. We will give you two tickets when these teams play this year. We'll also give you a 100% cotton extra large pullover sweater oh. valued at more than $30. I'm going to tell you how you enter after this next play. Second down and about nine for the Warriors. Roberts pitches to his brother, Damon, and Damon gets away from one would-be tackler and is finally taken down at the 28-yard line. Pick up of maybe two. Okay, here's what you do. You should submit your answer in writing. Now, it's real important that you must write. No phone calls, please. But to our producer, there you see the name and the address on your screen. Dr. Samuel Still, Channel 5, 1819 Nickerson Boulevard, 
23663. These prizes will be awarded courtesy of a commercial vendor and will not be awarded at the public expense. But if you know the first two teams that we covered here on Channel 5's coverage, and when, and when, the year and the teams, write us, let us know. You get two tickets and a very nice pullover sweater. The well, rule of defense is tenacious, to say the least. Well, if you see number 89, Chris Gaskell, the play before that, he would not let the, the runner get outside of him. He turned it back in, and that time he was in on the sack. So uh, you can see that this Bruin defense is really fired up as Bethel again sends two people deep. Rocco Brown will kick. Takes a kick of 10, bounce right into the hands of Allen Iverson at the 35. Iverson to the 40, all the way out to the 45 yard line. So what looked like a bottled up play, he still got five more yards out of it. He is, uh, he is so exciting. When I asked Kaz getting the lineups and everything, I said, who's your safety? He says, the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I said, oh, Allen Iverson. He said, yeah. The kid has just has got so much knowledge about the game and I you know you get it from 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 watching the game and being a student of the game but he knows what another quarterback's thinking almost he's got wide receivers to the right one to the left second man through is stacked up at the line Ooh, of scrimmage Rocco Brown, Brown says Mr. Shepard you burned us once but you're not going to burn us all night long I tell you what Rocco plays in that inside linebacker <laughs> Man, Mr. Shepard right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, may have lost about a half a yard as we can watch the replay. Watch this. Boom. There's uh, and there, no was a, there was a good article in the, in the paper, uh, yesterday's paper, about Morocco Brown in the uh, talking about Kickatam team in, team in general, and he feels that he is really coming to his own. He's got 20 more pounds, and uh, he's really hit. Second down and 10, fake to Shepard, the throw to Rogers through his hands, a little too high, and a late flag comes down. A late flag off the line of scrimmage. Let's see what this is all about. That ought to be easy to contest with one of the people to, to enter, right? All you gotta do is, is know what two teams we covered and what year. What year? It's very simple. I almost remember that myself. Uh, 1940, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I mean, let's listen to Kenny Self. No flag on the play. Inadvertent flag. So there is uh, that. Uh, that it looks like he's going whoopee when he holds his flag <laughs> over his head there. But what he's signaling is that was a uh, non-flag incident. So but, uh, Tim, that was a long way for that pass to be thrown. I mean, that was almost on the other side of the field. Yeah, and uh, that's tricky. And, and as slick as the ball is, Allen had a lot of zip on that ball. And all fairness to uh, Kelly Rogers. Third down and 10, the delayed handoff to fake over the middle, wide open. And it was a clip right Never there. Kirk, more than enough for the first down, but there is a flag on the play. I know the coaching staff's gotta be really be upset because uh, that was, that was a, it was a clip. There was no doubt about it, but it will come back from that point. So but that, that man is wide open on that hook play, and I don't know who is supposed to, who's the responsibility to uh, pick that young man up, but he is almost lonesome. So the penalty will be marked off from the point of the infraction, which is about the 39-yard line of Pigatan. It'll be a 15-yarder. And it'll still be, uh, they picked up uh, about a yard on the play. It'll still be third down. 15 yards from the spot of foul. Makes it third down and nine from the Bruin 46-yard line. So they picked up 16, but they gave back 15. <laughs> and they mark it at the 46-yard line. It's still third down, as you said. Plays coming in from the sidelines in the form of Alfred Terrell. And let's see what Kaz has up his sleeve this time. A minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. Iverson looking, doesn't have a man open, and now he is going to be sacked. The Kickatan Warriors did a good job of covering his intended receivers, and now Iverson could do nothing but eat the ball. Yeah, that was uh, that sack. Uh, you have to give it to the defensive backs, although the, the defensive line did a great job. I don't want to take anything away from them, but Allen didn't have a wide, he didn't have an open receiver. He's got you plenty see. of time here. His offensive line gave him good time, but it was nothing there. And then he stepped up and, and a good job 
of tackling him by number 76, Marcus White. And the first the one in on there with, for the Warriors was number 71. Uh, that's Aaron Wortham, the 6'2", 220 senior, plays that defensive end on that left-hand side. Second time out for the Bruins. Yeah, I think I want to make a couple of, uh, of announcements, too, uh, while we have a timeout. Less than a minute to go in the first. Uh, every parent plays an important role in their child's education. In fact, much of the quality of a child's education depends on parents. Oftentimes, parents are unaware of the powerful influence they can have on a child's achievement in the classroom. Throughout this school year, Hampton City Schools will provide information and helpful hints on how parents can provide a positive difference in a child's education. We want parents to become partners with their children for a better education. Remember, you can make the difference. Call 850-5200 to see how you can get involved. And we got the Bruins in uh, punt, uh, punt formation. Long count, a mild rush, not a good kick at all. It's straight up in the air into that wind. Does take a kick at that, or rather a Bethel bounce and rolls dead inside the 35 and about the 34. But that, that, that rolled about, about 10 yards. 10, 10 yards at least yeah. on the bounce. And you wouldn't think it would bounce much on this soft turf out there. So that'll let you know it, it is solid and it's not uh, spongy. Well, Larry Malloy and his group have just done a superb job in conditioning this field. I mean, it's just marked off beautifully. The, the field is, is in great condition. It looks like a putting green out there. It might not after this game is over. <laughs> All right, first down for the Warriors. They trail by two touchdowns. And nothing happened again as that defense for the, the Bruins has just been so stingy here in the first half. Jonathan Dean, number 55, in on the stop for the Bruins. And that's not the first time we've called his name. Well, we got a chance. We do want to talk about the coaches for kick a we got head coach Kurt Newsom. He's assisted by Brian Hebert. Grievous Conrad, Jack Jenkins, and Al Morrow. We'll watch the replay here. We'll give the, the Bruins defensive lineup, too. There you saw the real fine second down and 11. Three seconds, two seconds, and they're not going to get this play off as time has run out in the first quarter, and it's been all Bethel for the first 12 minutes. They lead 14 to nothing as they'll switch ends of the field. Go ahead and... and Make the announcement on the Bruins. All right, let's talk about the Bruins coaching staff. Head coach Dennis Kozlowski, his assistants are Roger Bouchard, Creighton Incremina Sr., Creighton Incremina Jr., Larry Estep, D Rock Croom, as you remember him, Neil Tuxtel, Victor Morgan, and Miguel Incremina. So he's got quite a staff along with Frank Brown, his trainer. The next meeting will be on Monday, September 28th. We hope to see you all there. First quarter statistics real quickly. Oh my gosh. Can you hear anything? Uh, <laughs> I don't know who they're hollering for. Maybe, the, did you stand up? <laughs> I was, all right, for the Warriors in the first quarter, two net yards, while uh, the Bruins put on 108 yards, seven offensive plays for Gigatan, 15 for the Bruins. Just real quickly. Uh, Time of possession. Let's see, we got the time of possession here. Do we have that, Gary? No, I asked for so the, the, I got everything else. We got all the other information, but time of possession. Well, but the, the reason they're screaming is they're on camera. Ah. <laughs> well, I scream when I'm on camera, too, but it doesn't happen often. Second down and 11 for the Warriors, and this one batted down. Another good defensive effort. That looked like big 89. And that's Chris Gaskell nice again. The young man is doing a great job on defense, Tim. I have watched him at, uh, at his defensive end position. I mean, his, uh, actually, he didn't play defensive end. He plays defensive uh, guard. But he has just been all over. He's 6'4", 259 senior. And uh, he has just been playing havoc with uh, Mr. Roberts, number 12, the quarterback for the uh, Warriors to this point. He is a hoss. Roberts rolling. Gets away from one tackler and then gets out to about the 41-yard line. He is down there. The ball came loose, but the official right on the spot to indicate that the uh, the player was down before the ball popped out. So they'll mark it at the 40, and that'll bring up a fourth down for the Warriors. Fourth down and about four. Greg Askell has stopped the sweep. He's uh, uh, sacked the quarterback. He's batted down a ball, and we're still just just started the second quarter. 
The Warriors <laughs> appear to be going for the first down, and they pull the old <laughs> Hayden's <laughs> cap. No! Got the Bruins oh, to I, jump. That will make Kaz madder than anything because that's a discipline move. That will give the Warriors a first down. Well, I was amazed that they would do it, and obviously I, the first thing I thought of was they were going to try and draw the defense offside or to cause encroachment, and uh, that's what they did. Well, you do it because you got the other team thinking, I gotta stop them, I gotta jump, I gotta, I gotta get the jump on the, on the snap and, and beat the offensive man off the ball, and uh, it hurts you. All right, they needed four, they get five with the penalty, and it's a first down at the 45. Let's look back in, a little later on. Fumble! And I won't even start to guess who recovered. It looked like the Bruins had it, and it's, that's the signal from the referee. So a good tackle on Roberts as he was rolling to the near side, and he just coughed the ball up. And that was big number 58 that did the uh, made the hit for the uh, Bruins, Tim. That is Sean Robinson, number 58, in on the stop for Bethel. Here, let's watch it again. Now we're going to see as uh, Robert starts to come this way. There he is, is just number 58, just, solidly. And you can see he did a great job from his linebacker spot. He's a 5'11", 215 senior. All right, the Bruins with another opportunity at the Kickatan 40-yard line. This is Matt Harris. Harris for 20 yards down to the 20-yard line of Kickatan. And Kaz says a lot of people think that they just watch the tailbacks, uh, the, the play for the Bruins. He says, Matt Harris can run the ball. He's 5'11", 200 pounds senior. Uh, usually is a blocker, but he can run the ball as you noticed. Harris in two games prior to this carried six times for 34. He almost matched that output on that carry with a, a pickup of 20. And this that is Shepard. Well, that time Matt Harris was called on to lead the interference and become a blocker. And he did a good job tying up uh, the uh, kick and hand defense. Charles Shepard, number 24, who got the first down, first touchdown in this ball game for the Brewers on a 16 yard scamper. Second down and seven to go for the Bruins. 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Pitch comes to Shepard, flies the left side, got Harris out in front of him, and then he's caught from behind, close to a first down. It'll depend on where they mark the football. It's going to be shy of the first down, make third and very short, looks, oh, I guess about a yard. Well, you're definitely in four down territory at this point. You're going to... From the Warrior 10-yard line. Third down at about a yard. Harris trying to get off the field before the ball is snapped. He is successful in doing so. He would have been a 12th man out there. Iverson keeps the ball and gets the first down all the way down to about the seven yard line. So Allen Iverson picks up a little more than three and it'll be first and goal for the Bethel Bruins. If you joined us late, I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz. We're at Darling Stadium. This game is live on tape on the 25th <laughs> of September, 1992. That was Morocco Brown on the sub, live on tape. Live on tape, I, you've I like heard that. that before, right? Yeah, it sounds like Dave Letterman. He said, is that fresh fish? And they said, uh, fresh frozen. <laughs> First and goal, Shepard threw a big hole down inside the five to about the three. Well, I'll tell you, for a young man who didn't carry the ball in the first two games, Charles Shepard is going to be worn out here after the, the first half. Well, Macy Brooks, uh, number seven, was one of the uh, primary tacklers from his outside linebacker uh, that time. And uh, Calvin Baldwin, the number 14 defensive end, 6'2", 205 senior, was also in on that stop for the Warriors that time. Now, I hope I'm getting my information right, because Brandon Chenault, number 33, and... Back to the live action as Allen Iverson scores from two yards out, his second touchdown of the ballgame. But Brandon Chenault, number 33, was supposed to be a young man we'd see a lot of tonight. He hasn't even been on to, to take a snap. I, well, <laughs> I mean, that, I, that was more of a just a statement rather yeah. than a question. I know you, you wouldn't necessarily know either, but... Uh, well, this has got to throw off the other team, too, when you're looking to defend <laughs> you, one you, guy. Who can, you, who can you key on? Allen Iverson, you know he's going to be there. Iverson is going to be the holder 
Evans will try the extra point. He missed one earlier. He does not miss this time as he connects and makes it 21 to nothing. I have to tell you, I know Bethel's a good football team, but I think Kingatan is not playing nearly as well as we have seen them play. Well, first of all, you have to look at the field position that the Bruins had. The first time they got the ball, they started inside the 20 on that great run back. The second time they got the ball was on a, on a punt, and then they, they that time they got the ball on a turnover. So you get that kind of good field position and your explosive team, uh, and you don't turn the ball over as you see the, the touchdown just on a quarterback keeper by Allen Iverson, you're going to score some points. The Warriors have Number just not got on track yet. Yeah, and as and I said, we, we, we hadn't really gotten situated here in the booth when all of a sudden uh, the Bruins were up 8 to nothing. So now the Bruins leading by three touchdowns with the wind at their back. Wilton Evans will kick it. Two deep men for the Warriors. They need a break right now to get back in this ball game. They won't get much help this time as Evans will kick it through the end zone and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Well, that's the first time that I have seen somebody use that win to their back. Uh, uh, the punts and the kickoffs have been rather low. That time, there's a strong wind going from left to right and that ball just sailed. Uh, there's no way he was gonna run that back. Of course, that's the first time anyone's kicked with the wind. All the previous punts were... Uh, no, the, fir the first kickoff was with the wind, that's and that true. was the Warriors. That's true. If you remember, and it wasn't that deep. Took it at the 10. All right, the Warriors with Devin Roberts at the quarterback. And he gives to Damon Roberts, and Roberts will pick up a first down as he picks up about 11 yards out to the 31-yard line. Well, this is something we thought we'd see a little more of. Uh, uh, Devin Roberts uh, is a, uh, a good runner for the Warriors, number five. That's Damon Roberts. I'm sorry, he's 5'11", 170, just a junior. Uh, he has been their uh, mainstay, and occasionally you'll see number 42 in the back field, and I think we see him right now. That's Morocco Brown. First down for the Warriors. Same play, basically the same result. Well, you see when he tries to turn, what happens? His feet are slipping out of under him when he's trying to cut. What a runner's got to do, and and I learned this by watching runners and coaching myself, is you got to lower your center of gravity as we watch the replay. You lower your center of gravity, and it's a little easier to make those cuts. See that quick hitter, he would have gotten the first down had he yes. not slipped. So it is second down and a yard for Kickatan as they've got a mini drive going here. And we've got movement on the right side of that offensive line, and that'll cost the Warriors five. Yeah, they, they will not uh, get that, they'll stop that play, and that's illegal procedure. I wanted to mention that David Roberts, who's carried them all the last two times, had a, a big game against Denby with 19 carries for 142 yards. The illegal procedure will be the call against Kingatown. But I guess Hampton, Roberts did not enjoy the same success. He had eight carries for only 10 yards, although he's still averaging better than 75 yards per game. Uh, Denby allowed him to run, Hampton didn't. That makes a big difference. I've lost my And now we've got another flag down. So two plays, two flags. This is encroachment against the Bruins. <laughs> you make five and lose five. So they get the five back that they lost, and it makes up, makes a second down and a yard again. Come on, Barry! 7.20 remaining in the first half. Clock moving. And again, a man moves. That will be the defensive man. The only question will be, was he drawn offside? Looks like number 99, Hargraves, might have left a little early. Let's see if he was drawn off. He seems to indicate that he was. And he was. And that's what Kenny South says. So three plays and three consecutive penalties. So they've got five forward, five back, five forward. Nathan, second down, six yards to go.
21 to zero is our score. The Bruins hitting quickly on the third play of the ball game, made it eight to nothing. 14 to nothing on the touchdown by Iverson and another touchdown by Iverson making it 21 to nothing. And Devin Roberts will not get the pass away. That was kind of a, a unique play in that it looked like he was gonna go for a short drop. And I don't know exactly whether he never found an open receiver or what. Well, number 50, uh, Bobby Sims was right in on top of him, assisted by uh, Sean Robertson, uh, number 58. Let's watch this again, Bob, and see if we can figure out. It looks like Roberts wanted to to do kind of a quarterback draw type thing, and then the defense was there too quickly. Yeah, and Sean Robertson was the first one there. Third down and about eight for the Warriors. Roberts fakes, wants to throw. The ball is up for grabs, and it appears to be picked off by the Bethel Bruins. It is. And you see what they're, you can see what Kigatan were trying to do. You've got a 6'5", 6'6", six, 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 uh, Macy Brooks out there that uh, they thought he would be able to out jump and get that ball, but <laughs> who was that that got the, re the uh, interception? I'm not exactly sure. I believe that was Hill, but I'm, uh, Devin Hill, I believe, is the person it was, but uh, I'll double check that. Maybe we'll get a chance to watch it again. Well, it either, uh, well he, he's got Stith and uh, Melvin as two of his uh, defensive backs back there, so. This is Shepard, and Shepard almost broke that one for a huge gain as he was hit at the 45 yard line. He only had one man to beat, and he would have been gone. And he only picked up, well, only he picked up about six. He got seven. Six, six or seven yards, so. Second down and three, and the ball squarely at the 45-yard line. Well, number 66 and 55 are opening up a lot of holes on that left-hand side. And Shepard this time is collared by Morocco Brown, but struggles his way close to the first down. So a good second effort. Charles Shepard has been almost the, the exclusive go-to man here in the first half. And he'll be very close to a first down. It would appear from here. Well, if I can get the referee to, yeah, it's a first down. Don't bother to bring the chains across. <laughs> but they're going to anyway. I mean, come on. Well, 77 is Mike Schultz, six, four and a half, 280 on that one side, along with uh, trying to pick the other guy up. Number 39 is a defensive back. That's Jason Walker. I mean, a defensive uh, end on our uh, offensive end on that side. And uh, big Chris Gaskell. Ooh, what a job these guys are doing over there. Right, what did I tell you? I tell you? That was the uh, bad hill. I know. The all they had to do is call up here and find out. <laughs> 68 is the young man I'm trying to get over. That's Coulter. He's six foot two ninety. Tim. All right, my old playing weight. Ooh, so Schultz at 280 and another one at 290 on that left side. So you can see why they're going. This is Matt Harris, and Harris struggles for good yardage down to the Pigatan 46. Finally stopped by number 45 for the uh, Warriors, and that's uh, uh, Allen. Javal Allen, number 45, in on the stop. Second and five, pitch goes to Shepard. Another late flag comes down. Big 76. Uh, Defensive end Marcus White, six foot two seventy-five. We're talking about some big guys out there. I was out on the field as I mentioned earlier, and uh, I was somewhat taken back by some of the size of these young men. Uh, <laughs> I wish the people could have heard that. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, Scotty, I was a, a wee bit dwarfed by some of them. Well, you may have been intimidated by the size, too. But they got the pads on, they look a lot bigger than they are. i tell you who looked <laughs> big while I was out there was number 80, and that's Michael Simmons. I guess he should. He's 6'7", 203. Yeah, he's a good-sized lad. Penalty against the Bruins marks the ball at the 41-yard line, second down and long. Iverson being chased and unloads, throws downfield. They had Rodgers open, 
but couldn't get the ball to him. A good effort by uh, Iverson to even get the pass away. And Tim, he threw that back and away and fallen away. That was an excellent pass. It was, uh, uh, he put it where the only one who was going to be able to catch it was uh, Kelly Rogers. I have to tell you, I was talking to Kaz before the game. He was telling me he got a, a several calls at the school today because of the inclement weather. People wanted to know if the game was going to be held, and he received a, a call from a, a, a lady who, as we watch the replay here, you'll see Iverson trying to evade number 71, uh, Aaron Wharton. But uh, Kaz says this lady called, wanted to know if the game was going to be played, and he says, uh, he says, lady, we're the only dance in town. <laughs> We're going to play. And she said, well, I guess I'm going to come out there and dance in the rain with you. So she must be here with the uh, hearty souls that are here. Iverson looking downfield, uses his speed to burst between two would-be tacklers. And that's Brown and Brooks. <laughs> Tackled by Macy Brooks. Macy <laughs> Referee got a good block in there. Ball is going to be short of the first down by about three yards. It'll be fourth down and three. Well, Allen would look like he was going to be tackled a couple of times. and He is just so elusive when he gets back there. Interestingly now, the Warriors are going to watch the Bruins go into deep punt formation. And guess who, who centers for the punts? I don't know. Big Chris Gaskell. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was Allen Iris who does everything but blow up the football, so I, I wasn't sure. I, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised by this move. Ball is fumbled, and it is blocked as the Warriors got good pressure on the kicker and were able to block it as Charles, uh, Kevin Melvin, rather, had difficulty with that, that wet football. I was surprised they didn't go for the first down. Uh, well, he didn't want to give him very good position. Your defense has been doing a great job of holding him, so why give him good field position? But the Warriors did a good job and got a break with the uh, the fumbling of the snap. Watch Here, this. Here's your replay. You're going to see the ball. And that was a great snap. You know, nothing wrong with a snap, but it was mishandled by Melvin. And, and I don't know if he'd have got it off if it had been if he'd have, if he'd have caught it clean. All I right. mean, that was a good rush by the Warriors at the Bruin 48-yard line. And the Warriors stick to the ground. That's Mr. Roberts handing off to Mr. Roberts. <laughs> Devin to Damon. Devin to Damon is right. With 2.50, there you see the time remaining here in the first half. It's been all Bethel with three scores, leading 21 to nothing as we approach halftime. Second down and about eight for the Warriors. Quick hitter up the middle to about the 43-yard line. And Chris Gaskell right in the middle. That young man is all over that field tonight, offensively and defensively, playing guard on uh, defense and tight end on offense and centers the ball on punts. And uh, Morocco Brown was the ball carrier on that last play. Third down for Kikatan and five. And this will be real close to a first down. It will be short of the first down. Well, it was a fumble. Loose, but, but it was after the whistle. Right, he was called down. The official on that side immediately pointed to the ground that he was down. And that's the fourth and short. So uh, you know if you kick a tan, you got to go for it. Warriors need to get to the 39-yard line and then a little more. They're less than a yard away from the first down. We try to draw them offside. Uh, did he get in? The, I didn't think anybody moved. I don't know either, but at any rate, a penalty flag with 131 left in the half. Yeah, we got encroachment. Uh, the, the outside linebacker over there, uh, Bobby Sims, moved, but I didn't think he was. Of course, I'm not looking straight across. All you have to do is get in that uh, neutral zone, and uh, I didn't think he got in that neutral zone, but the man on that side has got much better angle than I've got. So the encroachment gives a first down to the Warriors. That's the, uh, you did it to me, I'll do it to you trick. Well, that's the second time they've done that. Ball Tim thrown behind Macy Brooks. Both of those, the, tonight's game has been, Kikatan have done it both. I thought it was the Bruins that got the first down earlier. No, it was uh, the, the Warriors. I may be, uh, I believe it is. Run that tape back. <laughs> Live on tape, we could do that. 
Clock stopped with 126 left in the first half. The Warriors trying to get some points on the board before they go in the locker room. This would be real important to Kigatan. This game is very important for both of these two teams, but the Warriors can ill afford a second loss in the district. Got Brooks open, completes the pass for a first down at the 21-yard line. And that's the guy you want to get the ball to because he's a big one back there. That was number one making the stop. That's uh, Devon Hill. Hill. He's the one that made that interception earlier. Clock has stopped while they advance the chains. The Warriors with the hurry-up offense are up there at the line. And Roberts coughs the ball off. It was recovered by a Warrior. But again, that slippery football becoming a factor. And number 58 for the Bruins is, uh, he goes in for Chris Gaskell. He's a little quicker. Timeout called. I was wondering if they would do that. John the Robinson. Warriors had three timeouts as we approached the final minute, and they did call a timeout. Let about five seconds go off the clock. Yeah. Well, we got this timeout. Let me do go back and, and tell. We will pick a player, a D.C. Gravy Sports Place player of the game from each one of these teams tonight. They will receive a plaque and a shirt. The plaque will come from D.C. Gravy located at Tab Square. You're losing around the 17. Battle, <laughs> and the uh, shirt will come from Sports Place located at Hampton Woods Plaza. Uh, yeah, well, I think I heard some of that. <laughs> DC Engraving is giving us the plaque. Sports okay. Place is giving the shirt. We're going to recognize a player from each one of these games, and, and this is an unscientific thing that uh, you and I do and with the least. help of Dr. Sam and the Scotty and whoever else wants to put right. in their words. Finish up here. I got my own thing to do. <laughs> I want to remind you that Channel 5 wants to give you free tickets to one of our high school football games. If you're the first person to write us and tell us the year we first began football coverage and give us the name of the first two teams we covered, we will give you two tickets when these teams play this year. We will also give you a 100% cotton extra large pullover sweater valued at more than $30. You should submit your answer in writing to our producer, and I'll give you that name and address after this play. Roberts back to pass. Sees some running room, gets by one man and is down across the 20 to about the 16-yard line. And then the Warriors quickly call a timeout, or do they? No, the officials stop the clock for a minute, but the Warriors will go without calling a timeout. Macy Brooks lines up wide to the left. I would imagine he will be the man to look for in the corner of the end zone. He says, Roberts, throw it to me, and then it's thrown well out of bounds. Stopping the clock with 35 seconds. All right, real quickly now, that address to send your, your answer to our question. What was the first two teams we covered, and what year? Send them to Dr. Sam Still, Channel 5, 1819 Nickerson Boulevard, Hampton 23663. Okay, that's the, if you can't remember the address, just call the school board and uh, ask the, over to Hampton City Schools and ask for the address over yeah, there. Yeah, that's 850-5200. All right. Back to the important stuff. Third down and five. Roberts again wants to pass, but he will not be allowed to as in on the play again was an ever-present number 55 for the Bruins, Jonathan Dean. Jonathan Dean has been playing a great game on defense and causes uh, and it caused one fumble. Right, and it also causes Kickatan taking their another timeout with only 23 seconds. It's fourth down. Now you're fourth and ten. And uh, your last chance before the end of the first half. Each team with one timeout remaining. 23 seconds remaining in the first half. Want to remind you that uh, we will have, well, uh, weather permitting, I should quickly add that because I'm not sure they're going to have. We will not. Okay, so. All right, the, uh, the problem, I started to give you a plug to watch the band uh, at halftime, but they will not be performing because of the terrible You know weather. that for sure. I just heard that from Dr. Uh, not Dr. But, uh, Scotty Bowers, our uh, ever-present director. Oh, are, they, are they gonna do anything at all? It's my understanding that they are not. Uh, they cannot. Hey, watch the whole hey, 81! Okay. 81! 
So the weather being as it is, it continues to be raining and windy and chilly, about 65, 63 degrees at game time. Fourth down and 10 in the end zone, and it just is a little too tall for the intended receiver out on the play. That was Joe Garrett, number 81. And I think, Tim, he may have been more concerned that he stay in bounds and not out of the end zone. And uh, really, his timing was off a little bit, but you can't fault him. That was a, a nice throw. It was a good throw by Roberts. Here you see him on the run, throwing in the end zone. You'll see number 81 is open, but he, he jumped a little early. Yeah, and again, I think it might be because he was didn't know where he was in the end zone, and that was a tough place to be, but it was uh, an excellent throw. So with each team having one timeout remaining in the first half, we'll look at the Bruins probably just fall on the ball. That's exactly what's going to happen. They don't want to chance anything happening down here at their 20-yard line. And they will go into the locker room with a three-touchdown lead after the first 24 minutes of action. So the Bruins and the Warriors have battled to a... 21-0 score at halftime. The Bruins out quickly on the big return by Allen Iverson. He added two touchdowns later in the first half, and they lead 21-0. We'll return with the third quarter of action after a brief timeout. There you see the Bethel Bruins back on the field as we are just a couple of minutes away from the start of the third quarter. Let's run down the first half statistics for you very quickly. The Kikatan Warriors with four first downs to the Bruins, 11. Total net yards, 187 for the Bruins, just 43 for Kikatan, 125 rushing yards, 64 in the air for Bethel, 43 total, 30 and 13, as you can see. Passing for the Bruins, Iverson, three of six, no INTs, and uh, Roberts, one of six with the interception. Time of possession, pretty even, at 9.41 for Kikatan, 11.19 for the Bruins. Individual statistics in the first half. The rushing department, Devin Roberts had eight carries for 24 yards. Morocco Brown, one for two. And Damon Roberts, nine carries for 29 yards. For the Bethel Bruins, they were led by Shepard, who had 12 carries for 73 yards. Matt Harris, three carries for 29. And Alan Iverson, six carries for 24 yards total. Receiving three catches for the Bruins, two by Kirk for a total of 20, excuse me, 42 yards. Rogers had the other catch for 22. And Brooks, of course, was the lone receiver for Kingatan, one catch, 13 yards. And uh, the Warriors at halftime trail 21 to nothing against the Bethel Bruins. The Bruins, of course, are the uh, defending Peninsula District champions, and they, uh, not the first time I've seen them, they've come out and played very impressively for the first half. Well, they really did. They started off with real good uh, field position. Allen Iverson carrying the ball clear down to 18, and then the second running play they scored, and then they seemed to have good field position. They not only intercepted the pass, but they also got a fumble. Uh, Kickatan will receive the start of the second half because they deferred to the second half, so the Bruins will be kicking with the wind to the back as we have a strong wind going from left to right. Game time temperature in the low 60s, a rather raw evening here on the 25th of September, 1992. The Warriors one and one with a victory in the initial week against Denby, and then a loss to Hampton, 20 to seven, while the Bruins, looking to improve their record to three and zero, they beat Lafayette, 21 to nothing, and Mansfield, 21 to 10. They're stuck on the 21 number, it would appear, as they lead 21 to nothing here in the start of the third quarter. As number 24 for the uh, Warriors, who That's got the ball, Tim. I think what's his number? Anthony McNeil. And he carried the back, kickoff. Excuse me, took it to the right hand side and didn't get the wall set up. Uh, the Warriors uh, starting off not too bad a field position, starting off about the 25 yard line. During the halftime, a, uh, an injured player for Kigatan was removed from the field. I do not know for sure who it was. I can tell you 
There was speculation that it was Javal, Javal Allen, but number 45, Run! but I see him on the sideline, so I will Run! not try and speculate any further as to who it might be. We have a fumble, and it looks like it's recovered by the Bruins in the form of number 55, Jonathan Dean. That's another one for Jonathan Dean. He caused one, and now he has recovered one. And the Bruins will set up in that great field position that Kikatan had is even better for Bethel as they'll start from the Kikatan 24-yard line. Well, I don't know what they're doing defensively, they being the war, uh, uh, Bruins, but uh, you can see that uh, Dean was right in there and then jumped on the ball, not only caused it, but then got it. I'll tell you what they're doing. They're hitting and hitting hard. Good defensive play in the uh, first half by the Bruins. Iverson going for it all. He's got Rodgers in the end zone, just through his hands. A good pass by Iverson, defended pretty well by Winston Fox, number one for King of Ten, but Rodgers truly had the better opportunity to catch that football. But Tim, I look at the uh, the rosters, the uh, Kickatan has a lot of uh, young men. They have two juniors and a sophomore uh, on their defensive secondary as we watch the replay here. And you look at the Bruins, they have a lot of seniors playing, but he's uh, got, he runs a lot of players, he being uh, Coach Kozlowski. That play, of course, was of the fumble. Second and 10, on the delay. This is Shepard, Shepard fumbles the ball. Yep, got, yes, he got it back, and it, uh, it appeared to be a fumble. It may not have been, but he got back to the line of scrimmage, basically. Well, that was a, that's it. That was a delay, almost a draw play that time. They've been and, doing uh, that. You know, I'm not sure what you call that, but it is kind of a But delay that was play. more of a, a, a draw than the other ones, I think, Tim. But the Warriors were, had made some adjustments defensively, and that went for nothing. Third down and 10. Iverson slips as he sets and then throws the ball behind Rodgers. And that's that, why that's why it went behind him. The slip went to set and Iverson lost his footing through the ball and uh, again Rodgers was the intended receiver and uh, just no chance to catch that ball poor, poorly thrown behind him. So it's fourth down now. And the Bruins are not going to kick the ball. They have the wind at their back, but uh, they choose not to, to utilize the wind at this point. Iverson, again, Rodgers open, and Rodgers can't hold on to the ball. That slippery football a little high. And again, Winston Fox defending on the play, but truly another catchable ball for Rodgers. Well, and the, the Warriors uh, really dodged a bullet to turn the ball over uh, at the 25-yard line, and uh, Bruins ended up with uh, virtually nothing on their four plays, and uh, that's, you, you, if you're a Warrior fan, you gotta say, whoa, that's great. So the Warriors now have to get untracked offensively, and they give the ball to Morocco Brown. He is wrapped up by Barry Hargraves, number 99. He's six foot seven, 242 pounds. I'd like to have to <laughs> feed that young man. <laughs> he doesn't miss many meals. And he didn't miss Morocco Brown very much either as Brown picked up a couple of yards. Second down at about seven for the Warriors. 10-18 remaining, clock moving here in the third quarter. Coming to you from Darling Stadium live on tape here on Channel 5. On the option, the pitch from Devin to Damon, and Damon finds an opening. Damon Roberts has Allen Iverson to beat, and Iverson will catch him, but not before he gets all the way to the Bruin 38-yard line. Tim, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but Allen Iverson ended up with the ball. It, the ball came loose, but the official there ruled that the ball, the ball was, was down. <laughs> But well, that was a nice run by uh, Damon, but an, also a great Here's defensive play. play. Watch this, a nice pitch, good block by Morocco First Brown there. A couple there. of good blocks. And then Roberts uses his good speed, trying to get away from Iverson. Let's see if we can find out what happened to that football and see just when it came See, loose. he's trying to knock, and he yeah, did. Ooh. He knocked the ball loose. Yeah, that was that a was, good play. And that was a great play. Yep, but it was not called that way. Still on his feet. That's number 24 for the uh, Warriors. And that would be Antonio Anthony McNeil. Anthony McNeil gets another first down for King of Ten. So that might have been the spark they needed 
as they have reeled off two consecutive first downs after the big gator. But you know, in, in watching the replay, it appeared that that ball came loose before the ball carrier went down on that play where Iverson said he recovered it. And he, he did. As you can see, the, he stripped the ball when he made the tackle. He came down with his left hand and knocked the ball loose and then ended up with it. But the official said no, and he's got a better look than we have. At the 19-yard line, first down, again, McNeil, and McNeil is stopped and wrestled to the ground at about the line of scrimmage. In on the play for the Bruins, 32, Matt Harris, a two-way player for the Bruins. And he picks up no yardage. It'll be second down and 10 for Kikitan. 8.50 remaining in the third. The Warriors desperately trying to get back in this ballgame. Trailing 21 to nothing. Devin Roberts, the quarterback. First man through, Damon Roberts. And Damon is hit by a couple of Bruins. The first was number 43. 43. And that's uh, Wilton Evans, the kicker, who also plays defense for Bethel. He is a junior. 5'10", 175-pound junior. So David Roberts gains to the 16-yard line, a pickup of about three. Third down and seven for Kikitan, a crucial third down for the Warriors. And movement on the defensive side of the line. Let's see if they were pulled off. If they jumped, It'll be the third time, according to Bob, that they have caused, and they did, committed the encroachment. We might want to take a second and explain, it, to the best of our knowledge, how that works, Bob. Well, the way it is in, in high school football is nobody can go into the neutral zone prior to the ball snap. If you go in, regardless of what happens, that is a penalty. It's called encroachment. It's not offside. Uh, it's illegal procedure on the other side if you're an offense. And uh, in, in the pros or uh, high school, I mean, pros or college, you can go jump in and jump back out. High school, you can't. You cannot go in that, that zone. And that's to stop taunting. Uh, and I think it's a good, it's a good uh, rule for the high school. And the, we got some coaches that use that very effectively. Going to be close enough for a measurement now. It's uh, a third down. Now stretch the chains. It looks to be a first down, and it is. So the Warriors will have a first and goal at the nine-yard line. Kikatan trailing by three touchdowns. Roberts still has the football. And a good defensive effort again. Matt Harris, number 32, came up, but the initial contact was made by Allen Iverson, it appeared, and slowed the ball carrier down, and then Matt Harris finished him off. Ball is marked at the eight-yard line. Here's your replay. You saw the initial contact, and then Matt Harris finishing off the play. Second down and goal. Damon Roberts, not much. Gaskell and Sims were the uh, first two initial tacklers along with uh, Marion. Maynard, Maynard, I'm sorry. Xavier Maynard. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Xavier Gunn. Maynard is 5'10", 215 senior. Third down and goal for the Warriors, a crucial situation. I hate to overuse that word, but they really need to get in the end zone this time on this possession. Got David Roberts out of the eye along with Morocco Brown. Two wide receivers to the left on the pitch. Comes and to Damon, and he will not turn the corner as again Matt Harris is there to make the stop. Well, I tell you, Tim, the other Mr. Roberts just barely pitched that ball as he was getting hit. I didn't catch the uh, defender, but he had to pitch it a little sooner than he wanted to, which gave your defense a chance to react. Good penetration by the Bethel defense. Uh, 
Uh, we can pick it up. That was 70, number 76. Yeah, 76 for the Bruins, and that would be uh, Williams, Lamont Williams, Lamont six foot Williams. two, twenty-two. Fourth down and goal. The Warriors feeling like they must get in the end zone. Roberts looking, throwing, and incomplete in the end zone. Intended for number 81. Yeah, it looked Cam. like a pretty good play. That was Joe Garrett, who was a another end zone intendee earlier in the game. You may recall Garrett uh, pulled up a little early on a uh, end zone pass, but uh, this time the ball was uh, just not there. Well, and it was not a good a defense pass. on there too. You, 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 I mean, you can't fault the uh, young man trying to catch the ball. It was good defense by the uh, uh, Bruins. So the. Warriors come out of this with nothing after a fine drive down the field. The Bethel defense stiffens, and after a first and goal of the eight, allowed nothing after that. This is Charles Shepard, and you'll see a lot more ball tackling going on now. The, the defenders for Kingatan know they need to try and strip that ball and get a turnover. Well, they would like to get a touchdown, a score in this quarter. Uh, so that they have a legitimate chance. Scoring three touchdowns in any one quarter is going to be tough. They've got just five minutes to go in the third quarter. And if you can get a turn down, a turnover down at this end, uh, you've got a uh, legitimate chance. Matt Harris carries out across the 15 to about the 18 yard line. That big number 80 was on the bottom of that pile. Inside linebacker, John Bunyan, number, he's uh, number 80, 6'2", 205 senior. Uh, him and Morocco Brown play that two inside linebackers, but he was right in the bottom of that pile, hanging on for dear life. Third down and two as they mark the ball at the 17 yard line. Big play for the uh, Warrior defense. Shepard again gets the call, tries to turn the corner, he does, and he's dragged down as he gets close to the 30-yard line. That was the last defender between him and six points. And that was the safety, number 40, Chuck Payne, 5'9", 175, just a sophomore for this uh, Warrior team, and you're right, that was the last man that had a chance. They recall Payne was shaken up in the end zone against Hampton last week, but he comes back here to make a touchdown saving stop. There you see him turn the corner. Once he got around Payne, there was nothing but daylight between himself and the end zone. Back to the live action on a first down at the 29 yard line. Ball carrier again is Charles Shepard, number 24. Young man didn't play much during the first two games, but Roy Kaz has found himself a, a diamond in the rough here. <laughs> He opened up the game very impressively, did Charles Shepard. He's only 5'5 five five and 152 pounds. So all of those of you who think you've got to be uh, a great big running back to be successful, 16 carries, 88 yards for Mr. Shepard. And now the Bruins are going to call a timeout. It looks well, like they had one player too many. They did. The they had too many people on the field, and Kaz is not real happy about that. Uh, and as we got a, a minute here, you got something you want to share with us. Well, yeah, I wanted to, to remind everybody again that every parent plays an important role in their child's education. In fact, much of the quality of a child's education depends on the parents. Oftentimes, parents are unaware of the powerful influence that they can have on the child's achievement in the classroom. Throughout this school year, Hampton City Schools will provide information and helpful hints on how parents can provide a positive difference in a child's education. We want parents to become partners with their children for a better education. Remember, you can make the difference. Call 850-5200 to see how you can get involved. Parents, get involved in your child's education. You'll love the results. Contact the Hampton School Division to see how you can get involved. Second down and about nine for the Bruins. Ball is at the 30-yard line. 316 remaining in the third, and now a flag goes down. I would have, I didn't see any movement, so I'm going to guess it was a delay of game, perhaps. Well, no, I don't think it can be a delay of game. It's, That's didn't right. Come from the right referee. official. That's right. Somebody was in the neutral zone. Lined up in the neutral zone. Yes, and you can't line up, and you can't get in it at all. So that's what it is, encroachment, the old encroachment rule. 
I and, that's, and that's the job of number 14, the official down here at this end. There's a shot of Kenny right. Self, but that's Merle Leeson, who is the linesman. Uh, he's the one who watches for that on this side. And he he's is the line judge. The line judge. He judges well, I the knew line. He was lying something or another. Yeah, he judges the line. Flag is down on the play, the pitch. And another flag comes down, so we've got flags all over the place. Shepard was the ball carrier. And he did a good job of miss, uh, making that first tackler miss by a spin move, but uh, let's see what the infractions are. By the way, it hasn't been working tonight for whatever reason, but we do want to tell Kenny Self we appreciate an illegal block against the Bruins. Want to thank him and his crew for their cooperation in trying to get it to work at least. Right. Could be possible a... Uh, Problem with the good old weather here at the Darling <laughs> Stadium. Although it does, it does appear that the rain and mist has stopped. Bob, I haven't seen any uh, any rain coming down, but Num the temperature in the 50s. Number 33, Brandon Chenault, who is just a ninth grader, six foot 170, is now in the backfield, uh, replacing uh, Miss, uh, young Mr. Shepard. And Chenault was the uh, runner we thought we'd see more of in this game. But again, well, him they, and Michael Jackson. And he gets the pitch this time. Jackson hasn't uh, hasn't done much at all. In fact, I'm not sure Jackson carried the ball in the first half. No. So, you know, Cos, I tell you, Cos loves to do that to you. You make your game plan around certain players, and he, he runs two other entirely different players at you. Third down and six. Third down and about six for the Bethel Bruins. Two wide receivers to the near side. That's Rogers. It appears to be Greg Selby. Iverson rolling to his right, throws over the middle, got a man wide open, off the hands, and it's tipped into the hands of the safety. That is Payne, and Payne returns the INT. Chuck Payne all the way down to the Bethel 40-yard line, make that the 39. So the break the Bruins didn't want to give kick right. a 10. And that ball bounced off the intended receiver. You can't fault Iverson for no. the pass. The man was open. He threw a nice pass, just went right off the hands of the intended receiver. And, and his other uh, wide receivers, we watched the replay. Kelly Rogers was the one who made the tackle that time. Nice throw. See, that was a very catchable ball. And of course, Payne uh, saw the ball tipped and made a great play for the Warriors to get the ball back to the Bruin 39. On the ensuing play, not much happening on the right side of that Bobby Sims. Line. Bobby Sims, again, his name has come up more than uh, probably close to a half a dozen times. He's one of those players we got to give some consideration to as player of the game for Well, uh, we've, we've got a, a bunch of them here on yeah, both teams that uh, we've got to consider. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Let's call it second down and nine. Devin Roberts, back to pass, gets some pressure, and then he is hauled down from behind by 99. Another, that's Hargraves, Barry Hargraves. 6-7. I mean, when he's got more reach than most people. So a loss on the play of a couple. Third down, and let's call it 11, closer to 12, but we'll make it 11 as the ball is marked just shy of the 40. And we're inside of a minute to go in the third quarter. Scoreless third quarter. Bethel led 21 to nothing at halftime, and it's remained that way. Both teams have had opportunity to fumble. The ball is kicked around. It appears to be recovered by Kikatan, but this will set up a fourth down and extremely long. And big, big Mr. Chris Gaskell was right in the middle of that in the backfield, causing that fumble. Another young man we have mentioned quite a few times tonight. As we watch the fumble, you see uh, Kurt got, Newsom there. Yeah, we've got less than uh, 15 seconds to go. Just never had the handoff. Well, that's because Chris Gaskell had a hold of the guy. <laughs> the oh. Warriors are not in deep punt formation. It's fourth down and about 18. They're just waiting for the uh, time to run out so they'll kick with the, yeah. with the, uh, with the wind. wind to the back, which is a real smart thing to do. Uh, while we're making the change here, let me do one more time, talk about we will pick a DC Engraving Sports Place player of the game from each one of these teams tonight. They will receive a plaque and a shirt. Plaque uh, will be 
donated by DC Engraving, which is located at Tab Square on Route 17. The, sh the shirt will be uh, donated by the Sports Place, which is located in Hampton Woods Plaza. Again, we re remind you also about our little handy dandy contest. We want you to tell us who were the first two games, the first two teams that we covered, and what year was that here uh, on, actually it was Channel 12 at the time, if I remember correctly, right? 29. 29. 29. 29. And then it became five. Uh, but you, and I'll give you the address after this, uh, this next play where you can write. Now, you cannot call with your answers. You must write your answers to the question, what two teams were the first teams we covered here on Channel 29, ultimately Channel 5, and the year that we covered those two teams? Tell us the teams and the year. And if you're the first person to write and tell us that, you will receive two tickets to the game matching those two teams, as well as a very nice 100% cotton, extra large pullover. Sounds like just my size. <laughs> pullover sweater valued at greater than $30. And in spite of the fact that they got the win behind them, they're still going for it. The Warriors lofted up for Macy Brooks. Contact between the two players, but no penalty flag, and I think it was a good no call. Yeah, it really was. That was number one for the Bruins uh, back there, who is uh, Mr. Hill. Uh, he was just 11th grader. He's small. He's only five, eight and a half, 145. And <laughs> let, let me give the fans that, that, uh, that name and address again. Dr. Sam okay. Stills, 1819 Nickerson Boulevard. That's Channel 5, 1819 Nickerson Boulevard, Hampton 23663. There you see it on your screen. And if you're not sure of that address, just call 850-5200 during the regular school hours, and you get that, and we'd love to have you enter the contest. Iverson throws, and it's intended for Chris Gaskell, and the ball was just thrown too high, which is not easy, as he is 6'4", but it was, in fact, overthrown. It was just a little bit high, and, and Allison, Allen Iverson, you could see after the, the, the incomplete, he was really down on himself. He just He just put a little too much on that, he was getting a little bit of pressure. He throws well on the run. And uh, that was just one of them that uh, he didn't complete. But Bethel has had some real wide open receivers tonight. They're running some excellent routes. Iverson short drop, same intended receiver. This time it meets with success at the 46 yard line of Kickatan. Mr. Gaskell, Chris Gaskell on in. receiving it. It's not enough for a first down. It'll be third down and about four for Bethel. And Shepard is stacked up by Morocco Brown as he got to the line of scrimmage. And Morocco said, no way, Jose. <laughs> You're not getting by me this time. Uh, Morocco Brown, Tim, is 6'1", 215, inside linebacker, and little Mr. Shepard is 5'9", 152. A uh, little difference in uh, about 57 pounds there. Next week, by the way, we will be back here at good old Darling Stadium for first the game. First chance to see Phoebus, I believe, Phoebus isn't? will be our first opportunity to see the Phantoms this year. This is Michael Jackson as Jackson is driven out of bounds, but not before he picks up a first down. So his first carry of the ball game, Michael Jackson, not to be confused with the Michael Jackson. Well, he is the Michael Jackson at Bethel High School. <laughs> oh, you mean the I one glove you for that? I said you. <laughs> Jackson coming into this game, 26 carries for 130 yards. He had a big 107-yard game against Lafayette. At the 39-yard line, first down, pitch again to Jackson as the fresh legs are bobbing and weaving and moving all over the field. He's driven out of bounds by Macy Brooks, but again, not before he picks up a first down. They're certainly real close to a first down. It depends on where they mark the ball. Looks like they gave him a bad mark there. It looks like he's going to be a little shy of the first down. Well, it may be that they blew the whistle 
uh, before he got that last little uh, bit, gentlemen, which is very possible. So it'll be uh, about half a foot short of the first half. In the fourth quarter, 10-19 remaining in regulation. 21 to nothing, Bethel, they led that by that same score at halftime. And we move to the fourth quarter. And Jackson is not gonna get the first down as he is stacked up by the middle of that Kikatan defensive line. And that was led by number 80 for the uh, Kikatan Warriors. And that's the other inside linebacker, Sean Bunyan. So a loss on the play. And it'll bring third down in about two. Well, he brings in number 39. Uh, Jason w Walker is, uh, is in the backfield now, I believe, Tim. Yes, he is. Iverson wants to pass. It's tipped by Morocco Brown, and it goes incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth down and two. And that's exactly who it was intended for, was uh, Jason Walker. Matt Harris and Kelly Rogers come out for Bethel. Receiver to the near side is 25, Alfred Terrell, or Terrell, I guess it could be. And going forward for an attempt at the first down, and again, it'll depend on where they mark the football. Well, it looks like they marked it across the 30, but I don't believe it's going to be enough to get the first down. It's going to be close, but I, I think they're going to take a measurement. But that, I think he's. Uh, Got two inches two short. Two inches short. Keep that ball one time. He didn't make it. So they'll bring the, the chains across. And he's about four or five inches short. And the Warriors have held. Well, Allen was standing up too high, uh, and he just didn't get the forward move. They got a good spot on the ball, uh, but it was uh, – just didn't get the, the offensive line, just didn't get the surge they needed. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Kigatan with the ball, trailing by three touchdowns. Kigatan and Bethel. Loft it up, got a man open, and just off the fingertips of Macy Brooks. Devin Roberts loves to throw to Brooks. Brooks, as you've mentioned before, Bob, is a big, tall receiver, six foot five inches in height. And that ball was laid out there very nicely. It just looked like Brooks just couldn't quite get his fingers on it. It really was. If he had left his feet, he may have been able to bring it in. But just a real quick, short drop, only about three steps, just out of the, off the fingertips of Macy Brooks. Good camera work. Our crew doing their always superb job. We want to thank our crew for the great job that they do, and uh, the weather has not been conducive. Bumble recovered by the Brewers. And that was that Bobby, Bobby Sims. Sims. Hey, Tim. Roberts just really didn't have a hold of that ball that time. He, he was fumbling as he backed away from the center and never really had control of the ball. So the Bruins with another break after giving the ball up on downs, get it back on the fumble. You know, you'll get a chance to see this. You're right, he never really had it. And Bobby Sims, number 50, made no mistake about it. He was not about to try and pick that ball up. He just simply fell on it and recovered it for Bethel. Iverson pitches it down the right side for Kelly Rogers, and Rogers caught the ball on the ground. He was on one knee when he caught it. And for that reason, he could not advance the ball. And uh, Morocco Brown said, hello, Allen. <laughs> Allen threw the ball and met Morocco. Both are just juniors. Both have been playing since they've been freshmen. So they have seen each other uh, a lot of times. And this is not the only venue that they've met each they've other. They've met each other in the basketball court. And then Mr. Morocco Brown goes on and plays baseball. 
Iverson, quick look in, got it to Gaskell. The big guy is down inside the five. It'll be first and goal for the Bulls. Chris Gaskell on the receiving end of that quick look in pass, just a, a quick drop back. And Gaskell at 6'4 makes a nice big target. 6'4. <laughs> 259, Tim, and I know he may be more than 259, but that young man plays basketball and plays baseball also, Chris Gaskell. So we're, we're talking about young men on both teams that play more than one sport. Michael Jackson stacked up, goes outside and into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, Gaskell. That just might be the uh, straw that breaks the camel's back. That puts the four scores down with uh, less than eight minutes to go. Very big obstacle over to come by the uh, Kickatan Warriors. But I know one thing, they're not going to stop. They're going to continue to try and uh, score some points. The Bruins need the kicker. And now they'll be forced to call a timeout. Not that I think it'll make any difference, but those are one of those little mental things that uh, that you've got to take care of. Uh, Wilton Evans, the kicker, was over on the sideline. I either he wanted the kicking tee, <laughs> and the young guy that had it was sitting on a bench just enjoying the game, I guess. Uh, he will forget it next game. Well, no penalty. Of course, we understand last week that there was a, a penalty, a 15-yard penalty on a touchdown, and uh, it was tacked on for the extra point, and, and uh, with the seven yards back, it was a 35-yard extra point. And they made it. And they made it. Come on, come on. Come on. Evans, good handle by Allen Iverson, but, but it doesn't work. Again, the Extra snap point is no good. was difficult to handle, and Evans missed it to the right, so the score will remain 27 to nothing. Our only second half score, a three yard scamper by Michael Jackson. That was a nice play by Jackson. It he really was, because he hit, up. it was stopped. I mean, the, the the Warriors did a great job of plugging up the hole, and he just bounced to broke it to the outside. And uh, Big Allen Inslee is up here who is kind of watches over everything that's going on. Uh, and I, a good friend of mine, but I got to watch him because he will sneak up on you. <laughs> Allen Inslee. Our next meeting will be Monday night. Hope to see you there. So the Bruins have basically put this one away with their Number fourth three, touchdown three, of the ballgame. Jackson off, with one, Iverson five, with two, and Shepard with the Robert, initial touchdown. 10, Robert, Gary, Evans has the ball teed up. He'll be kicking it into the wind. Gets a pretty good kick. It's fielded by Brown at the 15-yard line. Morocco Brown, and he is hit hard at the 32. Ball comes loose, but I believe they'll rule that he was down. Uh, number 58 for the Bruins, who was in on that uh, initial stop, and that's uh, Sean Robertson, one of the linebackers. He's only 180, 5'11". But we got to start thinking about players of the game from both of these teams. And just some of the people we need to consider is Damon Roberts and uh, uh, Macy Brooks, Devin Roberts, uh, Morocco Brown, Payne, the uh, safety on the Bethel side, Gaskell, Shepard, Dean, uh, Kenny Rebone, right, Iverson, Harris, just to name a few. I'm, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here early for the uh, Bruins, and I want to pick big number 89, Chris Gaskell, as uh, my pick for the uh, for the Bruins side. Tim. Well, I tell you, and I'm, uh, I tend to go along with you, but we're going to probably have to have a tiebreaker here from the band because uh, I'm going to go with Charles Shepard. I think Shepard put the uh, the Bruins on the go early, and he's had a great game. He's got almost 100 yards rushing. So well, yeah, and I, I'll agree with you that Shepard's done a great job, but Gaskell has done everything. He's been offense, he's been defense, he's centered the ball, he's caught the ball. Uh, that's kind of reason I'm going with uh, Chris Gaskell. Right, where does it say you get to give a rebuttal here? <laughs> Iverson with his own credentials tonight. 
at quarterback and returning footballs and playing safety and doing all the other things that he does. Uh, certainly, Iverson, a very strong candidate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, throw it to our director, Scotty Bowers, because I'm gonna stand by my choice of Shepard. And again, I, we emphasize the lack of a scientific method to this. <laughs> there is, uh, there's no guarantees to this. We just kind of feel with our hunches. And, and on the, on the Kikatan side of the field, we're gonna get a chance to watch this again. The INT is Mr. Iverson leaps in front of the intended receiver. He plays that like a center fielder. He does a great job, Tim. And good run back. The Bruins are in business again. Quick flare right side for Rogers. Well, we haven't heard from Scotty yet. Let's see what the DBF Bowers wants to add for the Bethel player. Who's your choice? Uh, well, I'm going to let you pick oh, the kick of tan. Oh, the kick of well, well, you don't have to give it all to me. Now I'll go along with that. Well, I'm going to give you the first choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damon Roberts. How's that? I saw you. Ah, uh, uh, yes. That's that's my young man I would go to pick. Damon Roberts for the Warriors. We agree on. We've got to figure out either Chris Gaskell or young Mr. Shepard. 27 to nothing in favor of the Bruins. Pitch goes to... Chenault, and Chenault is in the end zone. A flag is down, however. And they may bring this one back. Let's see what they call. It's going to be a holding call against the Bruins, and that will uh, wipe out the touchdown by Brandon Chenault, number 33 of Bethel. Get a chance to watch this again. You won't see the hole, I don't think, but you'll see Chenault with good speed and good power into the end zone, but wiped away by the penalty. Bob is working on getting his wireless mic on. He's going to go down and talk with some players and coaches after the game. Uh, Mr. Bowers, we need for you to break the tie or, or confuse things even worse by giving us a third choice for the Bethel player of the game. We'll get to that as time allows. 6.31 remaining. Second down and about 16 for the Bruins. Fake pitch to the right. Iverson being chased, running for dear life. Gets away from one would-be tight end. Throws the ball right into the hands of Macy Brooks. Brooks hasn't had much luck catching passes from his own quarterback. Yeah, like he didn't have any problem with that one. So Iverson is intercepted for a second time. And Brooks returns it for the Warriors out to the 33-yard line. Watch this again. Now you're going to see good pressure being applied. Iverson looks to have beaten the pressure. He gets away from one man. Then he just tosses it intended for his uh, receiver, wide receiver number 90. Macy Brooks was there and said, no, thank you. I won't have anything to do with that. And Allen had to stop and get the, uh, make the, the tackle. That was Hargraves, who was the intended receiver. Well, Scotty does, evidently doesn't want to make a, a Scotty, uh, Chris is more like you. He's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know before I go down on the field who we're going to pick here. So. Right. Well, maybe Scotty doesn't want to pick him. <laughs> How about our producer, Dr. Stills? <laughs> All right, how about anybody? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of help. Our director has just told us we just need to fight it out. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to acquiesce to you, Bob, and I'll, I'll give in to Gaskell with a reservation. Okay, All appreciate right? that. <laughs> both players, both players uh, very deservedly of the award, as in fact several players could have been chosen as well. Allen Iverson certainly has had a very fine ball game. Uh, but anyway, Chris Gaskell will be our Bethel player of the game. He'll receive the black DC engraving and a T-shirt. 5.28 remains in the fourth quarter. Third down and long. Roberts looks, throws. He's got Macy Brooks open at midfield. And Brooks is dragged down and out of bounds at the 38-yard line. 
So Brooks and a flag is down now. There's a flag at the 45 yard line. And we'll have to see what this is about. From the looks of the Warriors backing up, it would appear it will be against Pickett's hand. Might have been a clip. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here's Roberts doing a good job of finding the open man. That's Macy Brooks right there. He's got it. And we will not be able to see what the penalty was or when it occurred. Again, it looked like a late hit on Brooks as he was out of bounds. They did not call that one. But it truly did appear that Brooks was well out of bounds when he was hit. Higginson had backed up, but we still haven't seen an assessment of the penalty. Well, now we uh, this is a, uh, a, a penalty against the Warriors, Tim. It was clipping. Foul. In ball foul, clipping after the play. 15 yards from the point of infraction. Makes it first down for the Higginson Warriors. It would seem that the infraction, well, I was going to say, they marked off too many yards or something. You're going to try and do this again. Well, it, what, it, what we got, it looks like a uh, double penalty again. Well, wait a second. <laughs> one more, I'm going to wait a minute and just let them sort uh, this one out. See, they marked off too many yards, it appears. Yeah, it should be like a first and 25. Right. Now they've marked it correctly. They okay. They've marked it a 20 yard penalty. So they mark it at the 48. Roberts on the option, pitches left side. Hey, big Mr. Hargrave, 99, flattened the quarterback as he pitched the ball that time. Anthony McNeil was the running back for Kikatan. He crossed the 45 yard line. It brings up a second down and about 18 for the first. 444 remains in the fourth quarter. Bethel with a comfortable 27 to nothing lead. Higginson trying to get on the scoreboard. Held to just seven points last week by Hampton. They would like to get at least some points here. The intended receiver on that play was Robert Gary, number 10, and he just couldn't get to the football. Well, Tim, that was a good pass. It looked like he tried to catch that with one hand. I don't know why. Uh, it wasn't that bad of a, uh, a pass, but that brings up a third down, 18, for the uh, Warriors. Here's your replay of the, the pass see if we can figure out why he might have been trying to catch it with one hand. It looks like he might have lost his footing. He just kind of lunged for the ball. But nonetheless, third down and 18. Quick pass left side, and Macy Brooks catches it, but he is driven out of bounds for no gain. On the play was Winston Fox, number one. And also over on the play was... Did I say Winston Fox? Let me correct myself. It was the Bethel Bruins, number one, Devon Hill, rather, and number 43, Wilton Evans for Bethel. Brings up a fourth down and about 18 for the Warriors. They're going to go for it since there's no reason not to. They trail by 27 points. Roberts rolling and looking. Unloads and intended the ball for again Brooks, who's shaken up on the play. He went up high for that ball, Tim, right here in front of me, and the ball was way over his head. Uh, Frank Brown, the Bethel trainer, is right there. Help me! What? It's just a cramp, Tim. It's just a cramp. So that's good news. Well, it might be good news for us, but it, <laughs> if you've ever had a cramp, <laughs> no fun. But Frank Brown, the trainer for the Bruins, is right out there, which is, and that's one of the things that we need to get a chance. We need to talk a little bit about these. All these teams have a trainer that will be here at the contest, and you will see the trainers from each side help out the other trainer. And that was a good job. Just uh, take care of that cramp. 
4-11 remaining in the ball game. And now it looks like Brooks got about halfway across the field and uh, again was hobbled by that cramp that you referred to and they're, they're treating him on the field. And I'm sure, or at least I certainly hope that it's nothing more serious. And again, while we have this timeout, let me give you a, as you watch the replay, let me give you a, again that information for our, our little contest here. And this will afford me some time to read this. Channel 5 wants to give you free the tickets like to one of our high school football tonight. games. Well, if you're the first person to write us and tell us the we year we first began game, football Saturday, coverage and give us the name of the two teams involved, then we'll give you two tickets when these teams meet this year. We will also give you a 100% cotton extra large pullover sweater valued at more than $30. Send your guesses or if you know it for sure, to Dr. Sam Still, Channel 5, 1819 Nickerson Boulevard, 23663. First person, now that's the postmark, the first postmark, the earliest first postmark. And don't forget, these prizes awarded courtesy of a commercial vendor and not awarded at public expense. These are donated prizes that we're giving you. No one's paying for these, but no calls. I emphasize that no calls, you must in writing, send us your your responses. Okay, 340 remaining. Bruins, second down and 10. This is Michael Jackson to the near side. And he is driven out of bounds at midfield. Over, over on the stop for Kikatan was number 10, and that would be Robert Carey. Uh, Tim. If you're the Bruins, you want to try to stay in bounds and let the clock run, and he did not get out of bounds. He was tackled before he went out of bounds, so the clock is still running with 3.10 and count. Ball just across midfield. Hope you've enjoyed the game here on Channel 5. Third down, and now it'll be fourth down as uh, Morocco Brown on the stop for Brandon Chenault with the ball, but uh, Morocco Brown, who was uh, certainly a leading uh, possibility for our player of the game, making the stop. And again, we remind you, next Friday night, we'll be back here at Darling Stadium and hope you're out here, hope the weather's nicer and we can have a bigger crowd on hand for the Hampton Phoebus game. Our first look at the Phantoms this year. Allen Iverson all the way down to the 29-yard line. And he'll have the first down for the Bruins. It was fourth and five, and Iverson with a good gain all the way to the Kikatan 29-yard line. Uh, Tim, one thing about Allen Iverson, when he gets the ball, he is an exciting young man to watch. Watch the replay here. You'll see what we're talking about. He started at the 48. Looks like he wanted to pass. It wasn't there, and he just took off. Now watch right here, he'll make a cut through a couple of players and pick up three or four extra yards. First down for the Bruins with two minutes remaining. This is Chenault, flag on the play. Chenault is wrestled to the ground, and the flag will be forthcoming. In on the stop was 45, Javal Allen, and Morocco Brown, a penalty for holding against the Bruins. So this will back up Bethel with a, a minute 55 remaining. We invite you to stay tuned at the conclusion of the ball game. Bob will be trying to talk to players from both teams, if possible, or a coach or two. <coughs> penalty is assessed, a 10-yard penalty. It's first down and 20 for Bethel. Ball at the 39-yard line of Tinkatan. Iverson has the football. Looking downfield, and then feels some pressure from behind, reverses his field. Now spots an intended receiver, Chenault, but he can't get it to him. A flag down again on the play, on the far side of the field in the area where you might have picked up an illegal block against the Bruins. It looks like we got illegal uh, use of hands by the Bruins, Tim. That's a holding call. So Kenny Self 
has been a busy official tonight indicating the different calls to us. And we, again, appreciate their cooperation with us. The mic wasn't working tonight. Yeah, we ain't know what it was. Through no effort of his. Holding against the Bruins, so uh, they go backwards even further, all the way to their 48. And a minute and a half remaining. The Bruins will improve their record to 3-0 in their quest to defend the Eastern, uh, not the Eastern Regional, but rather the Peninsula District Champions. Kingatan will fall to 1-2. Iverson feels pressure, dumps it off left side for Brandon Chenault, and Chenault is into Kingatan territory at the 49. Clock will continue to move. Kingatan with three timeouts remaining, but I'm sure at this point they just would like to finish this game and move on to another game next week. Three yards on the play brings up 47 yards to Second and long, Iverson has plenty of time, steps up and is dragged, tries to unload the ball. He was dragged to the ground, I started to say, and certainly they have no protection of the quarterback rule in high school ball. He was clearly in the grasp of a tackler, but uh, was allowed to continue. Uh, he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball, Tim, that's why the penalty. So the Bruins have just had one penalty after another. Here's your replay. You'll see him kind of dancing around looking. He sees an opening. And then as he was in the grasp of a tackler, unloaded, but as you said very appropriately, Bob, was over the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. So that's an illegal forward pass, a loss of down, and a penalty as well. Five-yard penalty. So it's third down and a ton, probably about 30. 46 seconds remaining. The Bruins have not looked sharp on this last possession. This is a nice pass and catch all the way down to the 18-yard line. Ball caught by Jason Walker, number 39. Tim, that young man was wide open. That was a real nice throw by Allen Iverson. First down, it was third and 30. They picked up enough for the first down. Iverson again, throwing, got a man open inside the five-yard line, but he can't hold on to it. That was Devon Hill, number one, with 23 seconds remaining. Second down and 10 yards to go. So Hill, who's played well on defense for the Bruins tonight, playing the wide receiver role. The Bruins next week will be playing the Warwick Raiders, while Kingatan will play Booker T. Washington here at Darling Stadium. Iverson carries. I'm gonna make sure I got that right before I uh, move on with that. Let's see here. That's gonna be the last play. They're not gonna run another play. Coach Geiser, that's it. Yeah, Kingatown entertains Booker T and Bethel will travel to Warwick. So that's gonna do it. The final score is Bethel 27. And Kingatan, no score. And again, we invite you to hang around for a minute as Bob will uh, try and grab a couple of players from each team, if at all possible. And uh, I'm informed, Bob, in case you're listening, we have about four minutes of tape time remaining. So uh, if you can grab a player relatively soon, we can get a couple of post-game interviews before we have to uh, break away. Recap the, the scoring for you. Shepard started with uh, less than a minute gone in the game on a 16-yard scamper, and Iverson converted the two-point conversion. Iverson then scored two touchdowns in the first half to make it 21-0. Hey, uh, Tim, yes, I Bob. got Coach Kaz here Go real ahead. quick. Coach, uh, you guys come out and exploded, and just boom, 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 you got things going your way, got momentum, and then control the line of scrimmage. 
Well, our offensive line really did an excellent job. You know, they're a good football team, and it was a good test for us. Uh, we hurt ourselves in the second half with a lot of penalties and turnovers, but the uh, first half we played pretty sound football, and I was very proud of our team in that regard. Catan's a good team. Uh, when you have a, a second down and third down and 35, I, you, know, you, you got to throw the ball and work on things you need to. That's right. Well, listen, congratulations on your win, Coach. Thank you very much. Okay, Tim, let's go back up to you. All right. And again, I was uh, as I was recapping, Iverson scored twice in the first half to make it 21 nothing at halftime, and then Jackson added the only score of the second half on a three-yard run. The extra point was no good, and that's the way the 27 points were compiled for the Bethel Bruins. They uh, are able to record their second shutout of the season, and Kingatan, for the second week in a row, is unable to muster much of an offense as they had just seven points against Hampton. Yeah, we'll get Chris in just a second, uh, Tim. He's he's listening to Coach, and he's going to come right over here just as soon as he gets Coach Kyle's gets done talking. All right. Again, we remind you, our next game on Channel 5 will be next next Friday night here at Darling Stadium when the Hampton Crabbers and the Phoebus Phantoms, our first look at Phoebus, comes up. That'll be next Friday, the 2nd of October, here at Darling Stadium, Hampton and Phoebus. And again, we are uh, waiting for an opportunity for Bob to talk with Chris Gaskell. Here hey, he is. Hey, Tim, I got this young man here. Chris, you play offense, you play defense, you center. You did a great job tonight. Thanks. You know, our defense played well. You know, the offense line played well. We could have done a lot better in the second half, but our defense kept us in the game. Well, I thought you really controlled the, the line of scrimmage, both offense and defense, for the first half. Yes, sir. We all did. The whole team did. We all played well, very well. And it, this, you, and you wide open on those uh, little sh look in passes, yeah. the little quick passes. Yeah. We picked you the player of the game tonight. It wasn't an easy uh, pick because we got some good, a lot of good ball, ball, ball players. Uh, you did a great job tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing you later on in the All season. Right. Okay. All right, Tim, this is a young man that uh, it doesn't miss many meals. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. All right, Tim, let's go back up to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Our players of the game, Chris Gaskell for the Bethel Bruins. And Damon, or Damon Roberts for Kigatan, our players of the game for tonight's ballgame. The final score again, the Bethel Bruins 27, the Kigatan Warriors no score. For Bob Hintz, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.